My name is Christiana Bakker and I'm here surrounded by a whole host of lovely ladies, female artists, and we are at the residence of the uh, German ambassador in Belgravia in London, and it's an absolutely wonderful place which hosted an exhibition called Human, uh, which was uh, featuring art from sculpture to painting, portraiture, drawings, all different kinds of things, bronze, mesh, wire mesh, uh, created by these lovely ladies. Uh, the exhibition was uh, running for about four months, and over 600 guests had the pleasure of experiencing this marvelous exhibition. Now, it was written up in uh, a paper, the Camden New Journal, uh, which wrote, uh, Eric Gordon, the editor, wrote, I have come across the unlikeliest patron of the arts, a woman bitten by the bug to help fellow female artists. And uh, the curator of this exhibition is none other than the wife of the German ambassador, Marlise Ammon. Uh, thank you very much for uh, creating and curating such yeah. a marvelous exhibition. What was your experience? I think, first of all, I found this quote very funny. Also, one can uh, also see it from both sides, because this editor might have expected uh, that women cannot work easily together. But my reaction was now uh, that I was even overwhelmed by the cooperative work, uh, teamwork of all those artists. But I came, <clears throat> I came about it because this embassy, this residence here, uh, provides a framework for exhibitions. We have on the ground floor, we have no furniture, the walls are empty, so I found this very dull and had then the idea to invite artists to come here and show their work. Uh, I put out my feelers to British artists and uh, especially to female artists because I still think that female artists are underrepresented. <clears throat> and my reaction is, as I said, overwhelmed and it was uh, very inspiring and uh, very gratifying as well. Here in this room we have work predominantly by Frances Blaine on the walls. She is one of the great British abstract artists. She uses very thick layers of paint. You can see the amount of emotion that she pours into her work. Um, it's not work uh, for the faint-hearted. You can see the, her work is, is loaded and it requires a response. You can probably say her personal history um, comes into the work. Some people even say this could be a portrait, a self-portrait. Her father, I think, came from Hungary as a migrant, escaping the war, and they found refuge in Britain. And this trauma in her DNA somehow features also in, in her art. You can see also she's a masterful drawer. She's won some awards for her drawings here in Britain. Perhaps also have a look at this other abstract work here on the wall. And you can see anguish again, thick layers of paint. She applies her paint with a lot of fervor, I would say, and leaves uh, quite a lot to the uh, unexpected, to, to the coincidence. It's all in flux. It's not uh, formally done. Um, so a lot of it is a surprise. And um, yeah, and there are quite a few other works that uh, you should also check out here. Some wonderful abstract works with uh, predominantly black. Well, when I started photography uh, about seven years ago, I started with the people I had around me. And um, at the same time, I wanted to broaden my practice. And um, I started reflecting on my, my own experience. And as a, the wife of a diplomat, I naturally came to reflect on the diplomat spouse's lifestyle. Being in contact with other spouses made me realize that there was something in common and I thought I would show it through my, my images. That's how I came to choose the ambassador spouses as a subject. I asked each of my sitters to choose their environment and their outfit and uh, in a way that it makes them feel comfortable where they can be themselves, which is not the case when they are representing their country. I asked them to write a small personal statement uh, that would uh, express their experience about their life abroad and moving about every four years, and a list of postings. And um, 
all put together, it would be a kind of testimonial of what it's like to be an ambassador's wife, which is not just glamorous. Now, you're one of the few artists who actually invite the audience to yes. touch your sculptures um, and they feel very nice and organic. But what, what is it actually that these sculptures depict? Well, uh, for me, they're fertility objects. And, oh. uh, <laughs> because oh. all my installation here is uh, a discourse on constant transformation and the cycle of life. In our world today, we often think in a linear way of cause and effect. But before Christianity, before the introduction of patriarchalism, people always observe the cycle of life and inscribe their own lives into that. And in our Occidental way of thinking, we have been disconnected in that way of thinking. And I think it's, this is why touch is very important. Mm. As soon as you touch it, there is a kind of connection to something else. This is a more conceptual piece, where you see a retort glass, and the very bottom there is a photo. And it's a photograph of my father holding my son at a very young age. Oh. And my father passed away last year in May, and shortly after I found the photograph, it was obviously, obviously very distraught. When I calmed down, I said, well, okay, this is a moment which will never happen again. It's gone forever because my father is now in a different world. And my son, anyway, is now so big, you would never ever be able to cradle him that way. That moment is gone. But at the same time, the very gesture exists in every family, in all the communities, all over the world. It's a universal gesture of giving life, protecting it, nurturing it, growing up, transformation and death. My father always said, yes. life lives through death. And then the feather, for me, is a symbol of how it's tough, because the feather is incredibly tough, how tough life is. And fragile. But fragile, fragile and light at the same time. It's just That's <laughs> yeah. forever. <laughs> Here we have Margarita Hernandez, who is a sculptor who makes bronze portraits, as you can see, Winston Churchill and uh, Margaret Thatcher. And here she made a little mini-me version of herself with her own parrot Cameron. <laughs> I've discovered that photography for me has been very educational. I'm driven by the unknown, so I like to discover new countries, new cultures, new ways of life, and uh, it's by photographing the people of a certain culture that you've learned the most. And how do you go about it? I mean, do you just turn up? And yes, I just... Is everything spontaneous? Walk in uninvited. I, it appears to be very rude, but I'm usually welcome. <laughs> Not always, but usually. Yes. yes. So you, and why not? And I have a hard time imagining myself doing that in London. So I spend a lot of time with them. I don't like to just take their image and go. I take the time to get to know a bit about their life. And what I really like to do is to give back to these people because they do give something to me. They give me their time. Um, so I like to go back to the same places every year, which I do and uh, I usually take images back to these people when I'm lucky enough to find them. I took this image on the island of Lesbos. I documented the refugee crisis there from 214 to 216. And this is a portrait that is very dear to me because it was a very difficult experience being there. And he's just beautiful and his eyes say so much. And uh, the volunteers were giving them warmer clothes and he obviously got this hat that he was very proud of. And his whole family was there and they were ready to move to Athens that evening with a ferry. So this is a very difficult but very special experience that I had. Mm -hmm. Those two uh, elderly yeah. women are from two very different places, Ethiopia and Greece. Yet if you look at them carefully, they're very much similar, very, very much the same. Absolutely. And uh, yes. I mean, to me, what it says is that we basically are all very similar. Yes. I think what drives all art, really, those I confront those universal truths, life, death, origins, that are um, often 
difficult to confront in other media, but I think in art it's, uh, it is a way. I do look through a psychological lens, although it's, my work isn't, uh, although it's informed by psychoanalytic concepts, it's not uh, psychology, it's art. And then I do things like this, which is a portrait of my father. I look at my father like with materials and processes that speak. I've used this uh, wire mesh, which is quite difficult to make a relationship with the material. Yes. So the materials I use literally echo what it felt like to be his daughter. It was very uh, uh, spiky material. He, he was quite uh, volatile in that way. You have to be careful. And this piece, I think, talks about the mother, the father, and the other. But they're all bound together, so the three separate things make the complete head. And I think this thing, if I could say it clearly in words, I would say it, and it would be worth making the piece. But you can look at the piece and really contemplate this thing about who we are, what, what is the human animal. And I think the mother, is an extraordinary figure, and our memories are uh, really forgotten about being a part of another body, the body, body of the mother. Yeah. And this work is really pointing to this fact. Yes. We are made by the mother. Yes. We have come to the world through the mother. She's the gate. I think it's, I inspire so much awe in me that I make so many works that when I think about origin and the mother, I have so many ideas. This is part of my series called Boxed In. Um, it's, it's to do with the feeling that we women have, not all the time, but sometimes, when you just feel that life has really got on top of you and you're totally boxed in. So the blindfolds are the internal feelings that we have, and of course the box. We're really in there. <laughs> Are we not showing our internal feelings? Are we covering them up? We're covering them up because we do. Mm, I yes. think we do. I think women, I mean, maybe men won't, but certainly women cover them up. I think we go into closets and we, we scream in closets and then come out and dust ourselves down and walk out. I can't imagine what it must be like for a woman to do this kind of sculpturing work uh, on the hard stone or the granite. It takes a lot of power and um, I sometimes do, most of the time I work by hand, but sometimes I do use my compressor because, you know, you just have to go in there with it. Uh, yeah, what's this all about? Well, this is the end of this particular series. There's, there's other pieces in between, but this one is called Free Again. And it's the end of the series where she is actually out of the box. Oh. But she's not totally out of the box. She's still blindfolded. And she's still blindfolded. Well, she's, yes, and, she's, and the blindfolds actually are keeping her in the box. Because I think none of us are really ever free. I do bronze as well as stone. And this one is called Balancing Heads. I do a lot of double images because I'm a twin. Um, I have a twin brother. And so my life has been a balancing act. You know, my, women do have a balancing act, but mine has been even more of a balancing act. And, uh, and so I, I just wanted to do this particular series. Right. Right. It's my, yeah, it's my emotional CV. For human, I've been very inspired by the idea of uh, loss of humanity, the vast, huge rafts of people that have populated this world since we walked the earth, and the idea that there is no connection between the early peoples, really, and now. In the country, the real connections are things like pathways, and I wanted to recover in some way by uh, making impressions like you find in the soil. And I have laid impressions onto bed linen, which I use like shrouds, and those are the memories. I have made an impression of a drove road that has been used by people for centuries, which connect people. I'm very excited by finding things. I think this has happened all throughout my childhood. I call it the drawing machine. It's made of found objects which I found um, from uh, old piano wires to a uh, clockmaker's block 
Um, a lot of it is about measuring the world around us with time, gauging, weights. And I wanted to make something which had a life of its own and to transform the objects that I'd found. And it draws only if I push it or you push it. And the idea is that everybody can make their mark. And this drawing machine is mark making. Depending on the pressure and the way it's been pushed, uh, it creates drawings like this and drawings next door based on human interaction and people's traces and leaving their mark. Now you must have been perhaps inspired, you must have studied other portrait artists. Were you, oh, have yes. you had any well, favourite inspirations? That, that is a very, very simple choice. Um, in my view, Rembrandt van Heijn is the world's greatest portrait artist ever and the greatest oil painter and I'm so besotted with oil paint. I fell in love with it when I was 14 and it's a lifelong romance. I have never seen a painter use it so beautifully as Rembrandt did. I I'm a girl, Rembrandt's a man. I don't speak medieval Dutch and I don't go much to Holland either. And yet, when I look at Rembrandt's paintings, I am as one with him. It's like looking through his eyes. And for me, that's where all the magic is. Well, I was lucky enough to receive an old-fashioned academic training where I was actually taught to draw and paint from observation. I don't think that happens in art schools now, and most of them don't even have a life room. But I was taught to draw in the traditional way, and if you can do that, then, if you like, the higher part of the intellect is freed up to look at the character of the person you're painting and try to show more than just the external appearance. That's the real task. What did this exhibition give you? That I could choose what I submitted for Marlies to select, and I have grabbed the opportunity to make a retrospective. And here you see me at 22, mm -hmm. and here you see a drawing I made last year. And it's been illuminating for me because painters don't really remember in intimate detail. You think you will, but you don't. And when they've gone away, if you've sold them, they're not there to remind you. So from my archive, I have picked pictures, as I said, over the last 50 years. And when I see them together, I suddenly understand who I am.